Great game versus Bethune Cookman. First and foremost, uh, I got the utmost respect for Bethune Cookman and, and uh, what they've endured throughout the consequences of the storm and uh, how they've just rallied to stay together. The kids have been city to city, state to state, and uh, they haven't give up, given up, they haven't quit, and they're in need of resources and, and, and help, and I wish we could just rally together and kind of give them some type of assistance. Um, but a lot of respect. The coach is doing a wonderful job. Love him, I appreciate him. Uh, I wish him the best throughout the entire rest of the season. Onto the game, uh, tremendous output from the offense, especially in the first quarter. We came out on uh, humming, you know. Defensively, they did what they normally do. They had seven sacks, uh, tied in a record with, I think, three safeties. Um, we was allowed only three of 16 on third downs. Offensively, almost 500 yards um, total. Quarterback had a pretty decent game touchdown-wise, but uh, also a career-high interceptions of two, nine different players called passes. Um, we, we came to play on all three phases. Special teams contributed dearly, and uh, we got the victory. And it's a great crowd, um, surprisingly. I mean, it was a great crowd there in Jacksonville. The city did a phenomenal job. Uh, didn't look empty whatsoever. They did a phenomenal job of being a host city. So uh, my hat's off to everyone at Bethune as well as Jacksonville. Appreciate those comments, Coach. We'll now open up for questions. First question goes to Charles Bishop. How you doing, Coach? What's up, boss, man? How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. I wanted to ask, and you alluded to it in your opening statement, but uh, the, the fast start by Jackson State's offense has been something that you've been uh, preaching now for the past few weeks in, in regards to getting out the gate fast. How gratifying was it to see this offense to uh, look like it did uh, uh, opening week? It was good. We changed some things uh, by the way we practiced, by the way we attacked practice, uh, ones versus twos, twos versus ones, uh, giving the scout team a break a little bit so we could get some more competition. We did some phenomenal things in that regard. And we came out a little earlier than we normally come out. So the guys could get acclimated to the atmosphere, acclimated to the climate. And uh, they showed up. We've been preaching fast start for the last couple of weeks, and they showed up. They got it done. Sure thing. Uh, thus far, uh, Campbell out of conference game, uh, they've started off 2-0 and in the Big South. But uh, what has been your overview of this Campbell uh, team coming into Jackson this weekend? First and foremost, Coach Mentor, um, fellow former NFL player, doing a phenomenal job with this program. I think he's been there approximately 10 years or more, but he's been in the coaching for quite some time. I mean, he was a tough, gritty, hard-nosed player that took no jump, and that's the way his team takes the field. They're gritty, tough, hard-nosed. They're very disciplined, uh, very strategic. I like what they're doing offensively, defensively. They're stout. They got some guys that can get after the passer. Um, they got some high-ranking recruits. One of them, I believe, has an interception. Uh, we got a third-ranked guy in FCS, uh, 20 tackles on the season, interception. He's doing uh, Rouser, I believe, is that that's the name, if I'm incorrect. Uh, correct. Yes, sir. They're doing some wonderful things, man. I, I, I really have a lot of respect for Coach Mentor and what he's accomplished there. That's your thing. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you, my man. Next question goes to Zach McKinnell. How you doing, Coach? How you doing, sir? Uh, before we get into the game, can you speak uh, quickly about how important it is for you guys and what Mike Mentor and Campbell's doing in terms of the recruiting trail, in terms of really being you guys – uh, both last year had two of the highest classes in FCS history. How important is that for the rest of the FCS and for future high school recruits to see that Miles Rouser or Travis Hunter or Shador Sanders can be successful at the FCS level? Well, it, it's not just uh, getting those guys, recruiting those guys. It's winning with those guys. It's getting these guys developed uh, so they could go to the next level. It's one thing to get them, but now you got to develop them. You got to win so that you get the, uh, the eyeballs of the country, because I don't, we can say what we want. The, the team that wins the most in the NFL, the, the most guys go to the Pro Bowl normally are the top teams. So you, you got to win, but you got to develop these guys. But it's, it's wonderful. What he's doing over there is tremendous, and I'm proud of it. And then the, the second question comes, Campbell statistically has the biggest offensive line at the FCS level. Could you speak to some of the challenges that presents for you guys and what you've seen on film of about that offensive line and what you guys have to do to slow down that rushing attack. Well, when you hear of a big line, you normally hear about running the football. Um, shoot, we 
we pretty good in, in running the football as well as throwing the football. I mean, we, we really have a balanced team. That presents you with, with some ad advantages, but also is disadvantages as well when you get ready to throw the darn football because those big guys got to move. I remember when I first <laughs> When I first got here at Jackson, I think we had two guys with like 800 pounds between the two. I got them out of here so quick, but they can't, you know, they couldn't move. Only, the only time they moved is at the training table. They move really well in there. Uh, so it's, it's not always what you think, but in, in those regards to the two guys from Campbell, they can, they can get down. They can move. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Next question goes to Dr. Cavill. My man. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, Coach? This is Kenyatta, Dr. Biz. I'm doing well, Dr. Biz, inside the HBC Sports Lab. <laughs> Want to talk about the previous game a little bit about how balanced you were offensively, running the ball, um, and also in terms of throwing the ball. But the fact you were able to do it with such diversity of the number of players, how much is that purposeful about recruiting at a high level but giving folks that practice extremely hard the opportunity to get uh, game time? Well, it, it, it's very vital because these guys work their butts off and they want to be rewarded at some point in time. Um, all three of our backs that you saw mainly, there were starters at one point this season. A guy might have fumbled that lost his job and didn't have a great practice that lost his job. And it's competitive like that. We, we had a, uh, another guy um, did a phenomenal job that we knew could play this game, but he had to develop a little more before we trust Ooh. him with the simplicity of carries. Um, did a phenomenal job, but it was something that we desired to go out there and run the darn football. We get too pass happy at times and we uh, rely on throwing the ball down the field a little too much. So just to have balance, we, we needed to run the darn football and get back into being physical um, up front. And we showed that and uh, we're capable of doing that. On to this matchup against Campbell, um, two quarterbacks that are playing at a high level. Uh, both teams able to run the ball with talent at the running back position and also receivers um, that are equal on both sides of the ball when you talk about whether Williams, Sanders, Barr, or Wilkinson, mm -hmm. Hill, or Daniels. Talk about what you want to see your defense do to their offensive side of the ball that's been effective this year. Well, I want to say our defense continues to do what they've been doing. Our defense is a first in total defense, first in pass defense, fourth in rushing defense, first in scoring defense, first and third down defense. You talking about that defense? That's, that defense. Yeah, that's the one that we want to continue being who they are. We don't want them to disappear on this stage called the homecoming. Um, mm. Coach, a phenomenal job with these guys. But what you see in the game is normally what you see at practice. And it's so competitive that they know if they lose contain or – uh, get out of that gap, they're coming right out of there. And you got to understand, we're playing without uh, a couple guys that that started even in the first game. We're, we're, we're still without okay. them. We got a big plus with Shiloh coming back. He gives us the energy and the, the passion that we want. Hopefully, Travis has a good week of practice and he'll be in there as well. And we left a couple guys due to uh, disciplinary actions last week. Hopefully, uh, they get their stuff straight so they could be back as well. And we could go out there and do what we normally do, practice, play at a high level and compete and uh, force turnovers. Thank you, Coach Brown. Look forward to the matchup this week. Good luck. Thank you, my man. Next question goes to Wilton Jackson. Hey, Coach, how you doing? How you doing, sir? Doing good. I have a question for you. The last couple of weeks, you've talked about being another opponent's homecoming. Now it's your homecoming. How do you feel about that? Um, it's great. I, I believe this this was comprised by Coach Mentor and Ashley. I think they call one another, our AD, you know, Ashley Robinson. And uh, shoot, we, we, we wanted to afford them an opportunity. Um, this is a huge crowd. I, I don't know if they've ever played in front of a crowd like this, but Coach Mentor deserves it. I mean, he, he deserves the opportunity. We didn't pick them just because we thought we could beat them. We didn't pick them um, because we needed the uh, attendance as well. We're going to get 60,000 at the game um, and it'd probably be another 15 in the parking lot. So it wasn't that approach that some other um, schools may have those approaches. We, we don't function like that, but we know how other schools function. But uh, this is a tremendous opportunity for both teams. We're playing against an opponent that can come in here and uh, win. It's not an opponent that can come in here and lay down. We're, they're not going to do that. They're not taught that way. They're not built that way. They're not coached that way. So this should be a great contest, and I, I look forward to it. 
Absolutely. And one other follow up. You talked about it in your opening comments in regards to starting having the quick start on offense. How do you duplicate that success against a, a good, solid Campbell team this week? Practice. We, we, we practice how we play and we, we pray to um, play how we practice. Practice is everything for us. I, I, I know how we're going to. Uh, I, I shoot. I know what we were going to do on fourth downs last year, last week. We were garbage. I think we was 0 for 4 on fourth downs conversions. The only reason I went for them because we were in a situation where it was um, too close to punt and uh, too far for a darn field goal. So if we got in, the defense was playing excellent, but we were horrible um, mm -hmm. during the week uh, in situational football. Sometimes I, at the end of the practice, I put us in certain situations just to see how we would react. And we didn't react well in practice, so we didn't react well in the game. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, sir. Next question goes to Ken Rashad. Coach Ken Rashad, HBCU Sports. Uh, let me take a moment to congratulate you on the 60 Minutes uh, interview that aired on uh, yesterday. But I do want to ask you, uh, during that segment, you indicated and you said frequently in the past that you were never recruited by an HBCU coming out of high school. Right. However, um, an interview that was conducted by Rob Calloway last year uh, with uh, Hall of Fame head coach Rudy Hubbard at FAMU and uh, Coach Hubbard uh, described in quite a bit of detail of the steps that he took to recruit you to FAMU, in which he indicated that he didn't necessarily have the budget to bring you there, but you indicated to him that once you made your, your visit to, to Florida State, that you would indeed take a moment to go by the campus. Do you recall that experience? That was whatever. I, I don't want to, let me be careful with this, because Coach Hubbard is a hero to, to me in uh, the coaching um, carousel or circuit or pedestal. I don't know what word to put in there. So I want to be very careful with my words. Um, I don't recall that it may have happened, but I don't recall it. I really don't. Appreciate and it, Coach. You gotta... that, that's hard for me to understand because you got to understand I got drafted in baseball as well by the Kansas City Royals. So for someone to take a shot at me, that that was going to be a tough one. You know, that was really going to be a tough one. So I don't recall that. I apologize. I don't recall it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Last question goes to Stephen Gaither. Coach Rahm, how you doing? Stephen Gaither, HBCU Game Day. How you doing, my man? Doing well, doing well. Um, yeah, we talked about, you know, Campbell and, and the talent that they have. They have a lot of talent on their defensive wow. line as well. They really can get after the quarterback. You guys have been, uh, I know Coach Sims talked about how your offensive line has improved over the year. Um, what challenges are you seeing from that defensive line and, and how are you looking to see how your guys are measuring up against some of the best, uh, some of the best out there in the FCS? Well, they can play. They can play the game. I, I told you, I said before, they, they, mirror their head coach he, he was tough and tenacious and their defensive line is tough and tenacious they they play gaps well they could get after the quarterback well um and the secondary sound so it, it's a it's a great matchup i mean we feel like we we, we have answers uh, but it's going to be a great matchup it's not like we're going to go out there and just roll out and put our uniforms on the field and they're going to lay down they're not going to do that so we got to go out there and really be who we're supposed to be and perform. We um, Turnovers are going to play an important role, and, and I feel like special teams are going to play an important role. And fatigue, fatigue. You're going to see who has depth. You're going to see who doesn't. And uh, fatigue is going to play a role as well. And we haven't had that problem all year. Um, usually the team that's losing is always tired, and that's ironic how that happens. So, but fatigue is going to play a major role, and we pray to God that we're the ones in shape. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you, sir. Coach, as always, we appreciate your time. We look forward to speak to you again next week. Thank you, and God bless you all. Have a great Thank day. Thank you.